All right, as far as tools required, we have a hammer. We have a 10 millimeter wrench, eighth inch and a quarter inch drill. You might need a few more drill bits, but um, that's what we have out. Four, three, and two and a half millimeter Allen wrenches, drill, scissors, isopropyl alcohol water mix, painter's tape, and a microfiber towel. All right, so at this point in the install, we have cut out the template and installed it onto the trunk. Um, I have it uh, held on by some gaffer's tape, but you can use painter's tape if you don't have your car ceramic coated. Um, before you drill the holes, I recommend making sure that basically you can kind of line up the holes and put it on and make sure that everything kind of makes sense. And, and currently everything does make sense, so we're going to um, center punch some holes. but. It's just a good idea to make sure that everything makes sense before you drill holes in your car. All right, so I have center punched the holes and now we're gonna drill. Uh, I'm starting with an eighth inch drill bit. We'll probably work our way up larger. I don't know exactly how large yet, but start with eighth inch. Brace yourself and... Wow, plastic. That is too easy. Not cool. All right, we're opening up the holes to a little bit over a quarter inch right now for M6 hardware. All right, guys, so we've basically in drilled the holes on the car. Now it's basically time to assemble the trunk mounts, um, double-sided tape. We got some studs to install and then put them on the trunk. Now. Part of what you should do at this point is probably install at least two of the studs. We have these two installed and basically install it on the trunk and make sure that all your holes are large enough and that they line up with the holes on the trunk mount. Sometimes if the holes aren't drilled straight or if they walked while you were drilling them, the holes might not line up. And that's at this point is a good time to fix that. Um, at this point, I've already checked that. So basically I've installed this with no double sided tape in the trunk. Uh, and of course, there we go. So, and then I can obviously easily look and say, oh yeah, all the holes line up. We should be good for the next step, which is to install the double-sided tape. So to install the double-sided tape, I've already washed off this surface with isopropyl alcohol and a water mixture per 3M's recommendation. And then we will basically install this like so, using the holes to uh, guide us. All right, so now that is installed onto the mount. This is basically just a weather barrier um, to keep some of the water out. Granted, it doesn't matter because it's outside the trunk seal, but um, we wanted to at least try and keep water away from getting under into the trunk as much as possible. So next part, we're basically going to remove the red part from the, the trunk mount, and then we're going to install this onto the trunk itself. Um, you'll also want to wipe the top surface of the trunk with isopropyl alcohol for the best adhesion of the 3M. Uh, I know that the 3M is not actually what's adhering the trunk mount to the, to the car, but if you want the best possible adhesion, it's not a bad idea to do so. All right, so now that we have the trunk mount installed into the trunk, we can install the strengthening bracket underbody piece. So because of how the studs go through the trunk, you can't install all five studs at the same time with this part. You basically can do it with these two or a combination of a few others, but I'll just start it with these two and then you can install the remaining studs. Um, if you were smart, unlike me, You'd probably put a nut on that and then you don't have to hold it up there, but you're not, you're probably smarter than me. I'll just fight it. Uh, I'm using a three millimeter Allen wrench to install these. Um, obviously, if it starts to feel like it's cross threading, don't go harder. Stop. Fix it. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, but it's just going into aluminum. Once it bottoms out, it gets tight. Um, you don't need to go crazy with it. All right, so all the studs are installed. I'm going to give them like a quick little, I don't know, quarter turn. Um, nothing crazy. Just making sure that they're all, all 
fairly bottomed out and even ish and then we'll grow grab our uh, m6 washers and nylocks and finish up the install of the trunk mounts all right so we've installed all the nylock nuts onto the part uh, we're going to use a 10 millimeter socket on a quarter inch drive um, tightening torque is around I don't know, six to eight foot pounds max. Um, nylocks will obviously resist backing off, so really you just need them to be snug. And at that point, everything is good. All right, and then the last part of the install is to actually install our Delrin trunk stops. Normally here, they are soft, cushy rubber and we basically have Delrin parts that thread into the factory location. They can twist and turn, I have mine set so that they are basically perfect for the trunk shutting. And basically to do that, you want the trunk to basically rest on that as it's fully shut. And you just have to do that with a bit of trial and error. You don't want the truck sit trunk sitting up because obviously that doesn't look good with the uh, body lines, but you also don't want it to be able to um, move down at higher speeds so you want to make sure that this is very close to or touching that location there we go no there we go when the trunk is shut so right this moment we are installing the upright into the trunk mount these are m6 fasteners they are button head cap screws we're going to use a four millimeter allen wrench to tighten it and this is for the UCW and the V1X swan neck wing. It uses the same upright. The whole kit from here down is the exact same to the UCW bottom mount wing. Totally interchangeable. We're gonna tighten these bolts to about six foot pounds. All right, so we have the uprights installed with M6 button head cap screws down here. We're gonna tighten those to six foot pounds. All right, so we have the uprights installed. We're gonna install our swan neck UCW wing element. We'll throw up an angle of attack. Bam. The benefits of a swan neck UCW over the bottom mount UCW is slight improvement in downforce and drag. Basically, it makes the unit more efficient. The bottom side of the wing is what does all the work. Not all the work, but most of the work. So when you clean up that bottom side of the wing, you're able to work the wing harder and it does a better job. Anyways, um, swan neck wing a little bit more efficient. So we're gonna throw that on here and we're gonna use, I believe it's a five millimeter Allen wrench. We're gonna use some small washers and then a 10 millimeter nylock on the, the inside to actually get this wing on. All right, so right now we are installing the socket head cap screws through the outside so that the head kind of shows. We think it looks a little bit nicer. And then we are installing 12 millimeter OD washers with an M6 nylock. Again, it is a five millimeter Allen wrench and a 10 millimeter socket. And we're gonna go to about six foot pounds, nothing too crazy. All right guys, so we just installed the Swan Neck UCW. Again, you're looking at a little bit more efficiency compared to the bottom mount. If you need even more rear downforce, we recommend the V1X, which is a different wing element itself. It is 300 millimeters, this is 250. It's a little bit wider as well, and it's got better end plates. As far as the UCW, we do offer two different styles of end plates at this time. We have the regular rectangle guys, and then we have what we call the FFVs. The FFVs, as far as installing it, go for looks. We're not recommending anything specific. It's also impossible because every single cur surface is curved, so you can't really put it at an angle. We generally recommend making it so that there's a decent pocket of, of area here and on the bottom side, because ultimately what you're trying to do is just separate that high pressure and the low pressure.